Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for a squat and deadlift day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. It would be greatly appreciated. So I'm adjusting my squat style a little bit, going back to pretty much low bar mechanics here, trying to get a little deeper. Uh, I definitely got deeper than I did last workout, uh, and 475, I ramped up to that for a training max and actually was relatively easy. Uh, you know, I don't feel that I had a lot more in the tank, but um, it went a little bit better with just a change in my, my biomechanics. And it just had to do with my hip position and the way that I control the eccentric. So basically trying to minimize that knee slide. Although I feel like I do need to play with my stances just a little bit, just a little bit in order to make sure I'm getting a little bit deeper. Like I feel like just watching that, I think we're good at competition depth but it's just barely. And for a while I was hitting squats uh, deeper than that. So I just need to work on um, hitting that in depth on every single rep. I may start doing uh, some of these training maxes paused just to make sure that I get that depth dialed in. And I may need to do some singles that way and just focusing on getting as deep as I possibly can on the belt squats. Uh, so that again, the mechanics are, are dialed in and I'm used to hitting that depth all the time because that's where we have to get to get the squats back up. And I will, and I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing with this system, occasionally close variations and focusing on getting that. All right, for the deadlift, I ramp it to my normal 585, which I'm just counting as my normal training max. Uh, and 585 is always challenging. Even when I'm able to pull over 600, 585 always feels heavy. And it looks pretty good there, but it felt fairly heavy. And I'm good at the lockout. It's not hard to hold at the top, so that's a good thing. I'm always trying to hold those at the top just a little bit. So what we're also doing, uh, my lower days are looking a lot like my upper days now. Uh, I'm picking at this point just four good lifts to do uh, that I think are going to give me the most carryover. I had debated doing some good mornings today, but realistically, I don't think that I need them right now. They might help a little bit with that squat mechanics, but I think if I just focus on pushing the hips back more like I'm doing and maybe uh, a little pause work I think will be good there because I'm hitting the depth just fine on the belt squats and as long as I progressively overload those we'll gain the muscle in the right places in order to do that okay so that's really what I have to do and I do feel like quads have been a bit of an issue on the squatting however when I'm pushing my hips back like I'm doing I don't feel as much quad right they're not getting lit up as much on the max squats, which means it's not saying they're not a primary mover because quads will always be a primary mover on the squat, but it means that it can uh, reduce at least the amount that they're limiting me. And we know posterior chain, I'm very, very good just based on my deadlifts because even my deadlifts, my lower body isn't, doesn't really feel like the limit. It usually feels like my, my upper body. However, the thing to keep in mind when we talk about how things feel it's not always an accurate representation. We will never get weaker by focusing on the primary movers. And in this case, it's glutes and hamstrings. So I'm continuing to push the reverse hyperextensions and continuing to push the belt squats. Although I'm treating the belt squats as not necessarily a uh, primary builder because I'm going to keep the weight somewhat stagnant there and just work off percentages of my squat max. But on the glute ham raises, I'm going to focus on progressively pushing these back up again. I need to get these up to where I can do three sets of 12, right? I need them at three sets of 12 and then maybe go a little further. And we can do that. We can add more plates. But really, because I'm doing three sets of 10 at, at this difficulty on it right now, if I can add two more reps to all my sets, my deadlift will probably go up. Uh, and again, so we, we do double down on posterior chain. It gets hit a little bit harder. Uh, the belt squats is going to be the same way. I'm kind of pushing my bench up. I'm going to focus on just getting progressively stronger at these full ranges of motion using the variation that lets me get the most muscles involved. And that means not holding onto the handles, getting the deep stretch, the length and position on the quad at the bottom, the wider stance. Okay, so I want this to very much replicate uh, my squat mechanics as far as primary movers go and then everything else then becomes about support muscles but we can build that support musculature with what the reverse hypers uh, we can build it with my pull-ups and things I do on my upper body days so that's all to the back but the thing to always keep in mind on deadlifts 
back really only allows you to maintain a better, tighter, more efficient position. It is not, the muscles of your back are never primary movers on the deadlift. Not saying they're not important because they are, because they can help you maintain the most efficient bar path by staying in tighter, but they're never responsible for moving the weight. They just let you use the muscles that move the weight a little more efficiently. So we have to understand that difference. Whereas in the glutes and the hamstrings, these are primary movers and some are quads. The quads really only matter off the floor though. That, that's what gives you the pop off the floor. So as long as I get stronger at the glute ham raises and the belt squats, these lifts should go up. And then we'll of course finish off with the reverse hypers each time. And again, I'm just gonna maintain these constant for a little while. And if I need to, I'll add reps. If I need to, I'll add sets, uh, you know, as we go but I'm gonna keep it fairly constant. But if I need to start adding reps, I might cut down to, you know, three sets again. All right, we might do three sets and just push it out for more volume with the same amount of weight. Now, the other thing I needed to do here, I do realize I need some additional ab work. I haven't been uh, keeping up with that. And if I'm worried about uh, stability on the squats, because I really need to be able to get that forward lean when I push the hips back, so then in a way we get morning it up a little bit. So I do need my erectors and my abs to be strong. And that's where, again, the hanging leg raises come in. And so after I did all of these reverse hypers done, um, I did one really good set of hanging leg raises. And I just took it up to about 10 reps. And I moved my, my uh, slings forward. People will notice that because I'm trying to just leave my squat bar in the rack. I don't want to take the squat bar in and out if I don't have to. I'm just leaving it in the rack. And the only reason I don't leave my power bar in the bench these days is I need to be able to get to my dryer in the garage. Uh, so otherwise I would just leave that there. Uh, and quite frankly, and I've thought about doing that, it may even come a point where I just leave the deadlift bar on the platform. Because uh, really everything else that I'm doing, I can work around that. Although if I do that with the deadlift bar, then it's a little harder to do my, my upright rows. And I know that I need to do those. But I'm kind of leaving that bar in there for a reason. Because if it's in there, it's programming my brain to always think, no, we need to master this straight bar again. Got to get this straight bar back up above 500. We have to. And I need it to be there consistently week after week after week. Just like on the, the deadlift, I'm doing 585 for training matches. I want to eventually work that up. So really where I want to see these at is, you know, within a few months to where I'm doing, say, 505 or even 500 even every squat workout on the squat. And then 600 or 600 plus on the deadlift. And these need to be my baselines that I do day after day after day after day. Really the same concept as, as Bulgarian light, but we're only doing each lift twice a week. And then of course we're treating it like conjugate to where we do a max effort work, which again, they took from the Bulgarians at Westside and then we add in complementary work to get everything thicker. But here I am finishing up with a little bit of abs, so I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.